Now let's take a look on the stresses on the power screw. Total we are going to discuss here the five number of stresses. For this one we will consider here a screw. We have DI is the inner diameter is also called as the core diameter DC. DO is called as the outer diameter or called as nominal diameter and the DM is called as the mean diameter. We will consider here the square threads. Some threads I have shown here. The portion how much is projected outward will be equal to pitch by 2 and the width is also equal to pitch by 2 and the distance between the two consecutive point is called as pitch. So we investigate the stress here on the two different part. This inner core here is called as the screw body and the thread. So we will find out here the stresses on the screw body and the stresses on thread. As far as the screw body is considered, we have diameter of a screw body is same as equal to DC, that is the DI diameter. So DI you can refer as an inner diameter or it can also be represented as a core diameter or we can have a screw body diameter. DO represents here the outer diameter which is also called as the nominal diameter and DM represents here the mean diameter which we can calculate as the outer diameter DO plus we have inner diameter di divided by 2. As far as the square thread is considered, we have the height of the thread that is how much portion it protrudes from the screw body that will be equal to pitch divided by 2. The width of the thread is remain uniform constant over the entire length is equal to p by 2. So total we have to investigate here the five number of stresses. First stress is a maximum shear stress in a screw body. Since here the torque is applied on the screw body to raise the load. In that case the screw will subjected to the shear stress. That can be obtained by using the shear stress formula which is same as T by J into tau by R. And the maximum shear stress will occur on the outer fiber of the screw body. At the same time we are applying here the pointed force in a downward direction. The load W will act in a downward direction and let us assume here the applied load is a concentrated is applied at this point. So this one is a download force is equal to F. Same force is available here also at exactly at the center. Because of this force the screw body will come in compression. So that stress will be equal to the force upon the core area that is pi by 4 dc square. Now the screw body is supported in the help of nut and because of there is a contact between the threads of the screw body and the threads of the nut body. Because of that we have a bearing stress is produced and the force is acting on the thread. So we can treat this as a cantilever and we can find out here the bending stress. Because of the bending stress there is a complementary transverse shear stress. So we have to calculate here what is the transverse shear stress at the root. That is at this point transverse shear stress is maximum exactly at center because we know the distribution of the transverse shear stress in the rectangular section the distribution will be like this and the maximum shear will occur at center. Whereas for bending stress the maximum shear will occur on this point because for bending stress is considered we have bending stress is given as this distribution we have maximum stress will occur from the neutral axis at a distance equal to 1. So let us first consider here the maximum shear stress in a screw body. So we have a screw body here of diameter equal to DC that is a core diameter and we are applying here the torque equal to TR. So naturally at outer fiber we have maximum shear stress and the outer fiber is at a radial distance equal to R and the value of R you have to take as DC divided by 2. For this case we will apply the torsion formula. In the case of torsion formula which is T by J equal to tau by R where R represent here the position where the shear stress is maximum that will be equal to DC divided by 2. The polar moment of inertia is J is given as pi by 32 into DC to the power 4. So we will treat day here. This one is a solid cylinder of diameter equal to DC. And now we can apply the torsion formula which is T by J is equal to tau. 
divided by radial distance equal to r. Maximum shear stress will occur on the outer fiber where we have to take the value of r equal to dc by 2. So we can calculate here the shear stress due to torsion that is v of torque multiplied by radius r divided by v of polar moment of inertia equal to j. So we can substitute here for r is equal to dc by 2 and j is equal to pi by 32 dc to the power 4. So we get torque into dc divided by 2 into pi into dc to the power 4 and 32 will come in numerator. So in this case 2 and 32 will become 16 and one of the dc will get cancelled and we left here with q. So we have shear due to torsion will be equal to 16 times the torque required to raise the load divided by pi into dc q. So this much is the shear stress developed in a screw body. On the screw body since the actual force is acting that equal to load F and therefore this area is subjected to compression also that is the second type of stress is developed which one is the compressive stress in a screw body. So shear stress here in the screw body will act at this point and this point we have maximum value of the shear stress that is on the outer fiber. Now as far as the screw body is considered this force which is passing through the center line will shown here. So this one is the same as the load F which is equal to W for us. So this one is same as our load F. Because of this the actual compressive stress is developed in the screw body. We have a circular cross section here with a diameter equal to DC. So cross section area will be same as pi by 4 into DC square that is the diameter of a screw body. So actual compressive stress on a screw body can be obtained as load F divided by the cross section of the screw body which is same as equal to pi by 4 into DC square. This 4 can be shifted in numerator and we will get the actual compressive stress on screw body is equal to 4 times of F divided by pi into diameter square of a screw body. As far as the magnitude and the direction of the compressive stress is considered, it's a uniform over the entire screw body. So if we consider the same point here A, so this point A is subjected to compressive stress as well as the shear stress. So two stresses are acting at this point. One is the shear stress due to torsion that we have previously calculated that is equal to 16 times the torque required to raise the load divided by pi into dc cube. In addition to this we have second stress is developed that is the compressive stress. So we have sigma compressive stress is produced on the outer fiber is equal to 4 times of f divided by pi into dc square. Now we'll consider here the nut and the screw arrangement and we'll calculate here the remaining three stresses. One is the bearing, then bending and the shear stress. Now we want to calculate here the bearing stress on the thread. For this we'll consider a screw and a nut. Let the height of the nut is equal to h and some of the threads will be engaged here. Let n represent the number of thread and P represents here the pitch. DO represents the outer diameter, DI is equal to DC is equal to core diameter, outer diameter is same as nominal diameter and DM is a mean diameter. The height of the thread is same as equal to pitch divided by 2. So this distance also P by 2. In that case we have DO will be same as equal to DI plus P by 2, P by 2 is equal to pitch. The force is acting at the mean diameter dm, which one is the distance between the core diameter and the line of action of force will be half of p by 2. So this value is same as p by 4. So this hatch portion here shows a nut and nut is normally made up of bronze. And the material used for screw is steel. So if we have a n number of threads in contact, then the height we can calculate as the height will be equal to number of thread multiplied by pitch. 
So this height of the nut is same as equal to h, which is same as equal to the number of thread which are engaged multiplied by the pitch p. So this load is distributed on the thread surface. That is this surface. The load is distributed exactly on this surface. This one is a circumference you have to develop and you have to identify what is the bearing area. So you can visualize here this area, which one is this area on which the load F is distributed. So this load is distributed over this area on this area plus this area as well as this area. So from A to B is supposed to be the number of threads that are in contact. So we have a inner diameter equal to DC and if we unwrap the thread, then we'll get a circumference for one thread is equal to pi into DC. And for n number of threads, the total length will become n times the circumference of the inner diameter, that is a core diameter. So we'll develop this figure here and we can show this area on which the bearing stress is distributed, that is this area is a bearing area on which the force F will act vertically downward. So if you unwrap here n number of thread having diameter equal to DC, this total length becomes the circumference which is pi into DC multiplied by number of thread. We have shown here one thread, the height of the thread is same as P by 2. So this dimension will be equal to P by 2 as well as the width is also equal to P by 2. So this dimension is also equal to P by 2. So the given area will be equal to the area that will resist the bearing. So this one is called as bearing area. We'll represent the bearing area equal to AB is the length multiplied by width. The length is equal to pi into core diameter multiplied by n multiplied by pH divided by 2. So this much is the bearing area corresponding to that we have bearing pressure is developed or the bearing stress is developed. We can represent the bearing pressure equal to PB and the bearing pressure will be same as equal to the force F divided by bearing area and we have bearing area is pi into DC into N into pH divided by 2 so you have to multiply by 2 times. The maximum bearing pressure for bronze will be equal to 15 megapascal. So this value must be less than equal to the maximum bearing pressure for bronze. This value is approximately equal to 15 megapascal. From this we can calculate how many number of threads we have. Similarly n multiplied by p is same as equal to the height h. So we can calculate here the bearing pressure pb is equal to 2 times of f divided by pi multiplied by dc multiplied by h where h is the height of the cup. So either the term bearing pressure is used or sometimes the sigma b that is the bearing stress is used. So bearing pressure and the bearing stress is one and same that is the value of sigma b that is the bearing stress is same as equal to the bearing pressure. Now finally two more stress will consider on the thread. One is a bending stress on the thread and one is the transverse shear stress. So we have the load F is acting here exactly at the mean diameter. So this force is acting from the root at a distance equal to pH by 4. So this distance here will be equal to pH divided by 4. And the total height of the thread is equal to P by 2 and width is also equal to P by 2. To find the effect of the bending stress here, we have to shift the force on the root. So let's say we have a root at point A and B. So AB represent here the root section. So this point here is A point. So this one is our AB and this force we want to shift from this point to this point. In that case the force will be shifted as it is plus additional bending moment is developed. That bending moment will be same as equal to the force multiplied by the distance between the root and the mean. So this distance will be same as equal to pH divided by 4. That is this distance is same as pH divided by 4. So one bending moment will act on the plane 
AB which is at the root and one transverse shear stress will act will produce the bending stress plus will produce the shear stress. So I will develop that figure one more time but before that we have bending moment M will be equal to the force F and the perpendicular distance is same as pitch divided by 4. This bending stress will be act on the root area that is this area which one is the root area and this root area has the height equal to P by 2 and the total length equal to pi into DC into N and we have bending moment is produced in this direction. So to get a clear idea about the bending stress, bending stress is given as sigma b which is equal to m into y. y is the distance from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia i. So let's represent here this plane which one is ab plane is at the root. And at the root we have length of the plane will be equal to pi into dc into number of thread in contact and we have this height will be same as equal to pH by 2 and this dotted line represent here the neutral axis Na vertical distance here will be p by 4 so this value will be same as equal to p by 4 as well as this value is also equal to p by 4 and the bending moment will act in this direction if the bending moment will act in this direction then we have maximum stress is produced at B. The tensile stress is produced at B and the compressive stress is produced. So maximum stress will be produced on the top fiber and bottom fiber. We know the distribution of the bending stress. This one is representing the neutral axis. This one is representing the maximum bending stress. This one is also representing the maximum bending stress. One stress will be tension, other will be compression. In that case, this distance will be equal to Y and the value of Y in this case from the neutral axis the top fiber distance equal to p by 4. One more term is is i. i is for rectangular section is bd cube by 12. This time we have width is equal to pi dc n. So we have b that is the width is equal to pi into dc into n and we have the depth. Depth is same as equal to pitch divided by here I is called as the moment of inertia or second moment of area this B into D cube divided by 12. We have B is same as equal to pi into DC into N and we have D cube is pitch cube by 8. So we have pitch cube divided by 8. In addition to this, we have multiplied by 12. That is, in denominator, we will get 96. So, from this, we can calculate the maximum bending stress, which we simply represent as sigma b. Basically, this value is same as sigma b maximum is m into y divided by i. Here, m we can replace as force multiplied by pitch divided by 4 y distance we can replace as pitch by 4 so it is further multiplied by pitch and then divided by 4 finally we have moment of inertia the second moment of area is pi dc n cube so we have pi into dc into n into p cube and 8 into 12 is 96 in numerator 96 divided by 16 will be equal to 6 so we have 6 times f this p and this p is cancelled out and one p is left in the denominator so we have 6f divided by pi into the core diameter dc that is the root diameter dc or internal diameter dc multiplied by n multiplied by pitch so this one will give you the bending stress on the thread Say the line of action of force is changed from this line to the root. In that case, the shear force will be shifted as it is. That is, the load will be shifted as it is plus one bending moment is produced. Because of bending moment, we have bending stress is produced. And when this force is shifted, in that case, the force will be parallel to this area. So I will show the force here. And this force is parallel to the given area. That equal to F. So this force is shifted on the root area and will be F. This force and the given area 
are parallel to each other that will develop a shear which one is called as transverse shear so average value of a transverse shear will be force divided by area so this h area represent here the area which is resisting the shear that equal to f divided by total area is pi into dc into n into pitch and the two will come in numerator this one is the value of average shear stress now we are familiar here the shear stress distribution shear stress distribution will be maximum at the neutral axis so this one is representing the maximum value of the shear stress tau max and at point a we have shear stress will be equal to zero even at bottom the shear stress equal to zero so this time we have maximum value of the shear stress for rectangular this value is same as equal to 3 by 2 times the average value that is we have 3 by 2 and we have average shear stress is 2 times of force divided by the root area root area is pi into dc into n multiplied by php so 2 and 2 will cancel out and we'll get the value of maximum shear stress equal to 3 times of the load f divided by pi multiplied by diameter of core multiplied by n number of threads multiplied by php so in this question we can evaluate the five stresses on the power screw the first stress we have calculated on the screw body due to the torsion that will be equal to 16 times the torque required to raise the load divided by pi into the core diameter q on the screw body is also subjected to compressive force so compressive strength will be developed equal to 4 times of f divided by pi into core diameter square to calculate the bending stress we have to shift the force f to the root in that case the force will be as it is plus one bending moment will produce the bending moment will act on the root area the root area is pi into dc into n multiplied by height equal to p by 2 from the neutral axis the top fiber at distance equal to p by 4 and we have moment of inertia is bd cube by 12 here width is equal to pi into dc into n and we have depth is p by 2 we can substitute for this and we can find out the bending stress using the flexure formula final answer is 6 times of f divided by pi into dc into n multiplied by the pitch and lastly we are on the same plane the force f will also act that is on the root area which is pi into dc into n into p by 2 this force is acting and is parallel to the given area so that will develop the average shear stress which is f by a is equal to 2 times of f upon pi dc n p but for rectangular cross section we have distribution is shown here maximum value will occur at neutral axis tau max and this value of tau max is 3 by 2 tau average if we substitute for tau average we can calculate the maximum transverse shear will be 3 times of f upon pi into dc into n into p so these are the five stresses we have discussed in detail with all detailed expression of the development of the cross section area the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here